This is a production of PBS Charlotte. This week on Off the Record, guns at Charlotte Mecklenburg schools continue to make the headlines. Voters have spoken in Mecklenburg County and it's a Democratic sweep. Amazon announced its second headquarters and it's going to be a split. And if you're traveling on the roadways this Thanksgiving, be warned. It's all hands on deck for North Carolina Highway Patrol. And the region's first toll road is about to open east of Charlotte called the Monroe Bypass. Off the Record is next on PBS Charlotte. Hi, I'm Suzette Ree, in for Jeff Sonier. This is Off the Record, where we talk about the stories you've been talking about this week. If you've watched the news, read the news, listen to the news, you'll recognize the names and faces around our table. Dedrick Russell with WBTV, Mark Becker with WSOC TV, Katie Peralta with the Charlotte Observer, and B. Thompson, veteran journalist of television and radio. You can email your questions and comments to Off the Record at WTVI. Org. Well, let's get going. I mean, guns and schools, that has been sort of this ongoing, ongoing for weeks. Yeah, exactly. You know, I guess we've counted that, I guess, so far this year in Charlotte Mecklenburg Schools, I guess about seven guns have been found since the beginning of this school year. And I guess the latest happened at East Mecklenburg High School right. this week. And also, um, I guess there was a social media threat that happened at Olympic High School causing just mayhem and causing concern and scary times. So I know that the superintendent and the school district working on what more the district can do in order to keep guns out of schools. Yeah, it was. I was at both and quite different response at both. Now, got to Olympic a little about 8.30, 8.45, and by then that social media post had been put up on Instagram of a young man, a boy with a gun, call, right. him, call him what it is, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and parents were there pulling up, parking, you know, approaching the, the, the front of the school, and to their credit, the principal and the CMS police chief came out to the front and said, parents, we're working on this, your children are safe, but we need to do a little more investigating. Mm -hmm. We're going to keep this school on lockdown, uh, but trust us, and and we, we will get to the bottom of this. Mm -hmm. And what was telling was that crowd really didn't grow. We were there for the next couple hours or so, and the message was getting out. Now, was there a lot of anxiety? Absolutely. And parents were asking, well, we're hearing that there were three kids with guns. A lot of bad information coming out on social media instantaneously, yeah. and the school's got to wrestle with it. Yeah, and lessons were learned from the Butler High School Correct. incident, that shooting, that CMS was not as um, not as often coming out with correct information. So this time around, I've talked to parents, and parents said that I've gotten several messages from CMS telling us that everything is okay, the school is on lockdown, the person has been you know, caught. So that information and let the parents know that everything is okay and that we have it in control. Because parents just want to know, do you have things under control? And I think while parents are very concerned about this, we've seen different things that have happened through the decades in school about what gets the most attention. For me, a concern, it should be for parents as well, we never had social media that was driving the wagon. And social media in these instances drives the wagon. Is everything true? No, people just <laughs> What struck me about this was an example of something else. There was a woman who saw a fire. She pulls out her phone, she's recording it, and she said on it, yeah, I'm live on Facebook and I'm reporting on this. And I'm like, Everybody's a reporter. Everybody is a reporter <laughs> now. Right. And the concern for me with social media and kids having phones constantly in school, first and foremost, you were supposed to be at school, so why are you on the phone? I understand the need to communicate, but that is taking away, and it, it makes it harder for those who are supposed to maintain order in a school situation. What do we do? I don't, you know, that horse is out of the gate. You can't bring the social media horse back. But there's got to be a way to be able to police this in such a manner that it doesn't send people into a panic. The example at Olympic was very much that. That sent people into a panic, but there was no reality behind it. So how do we do that and protect kids and keep schools running without sending them into that social media panic? But the new thing that they do have this year, <clears throat> excuse me, is the whole CMPD 
can now pipe in their video cameras to the CMS system so they can actually see inside the school real time. And that has been key to information dissemination um, so that parents feel that you really do know what's going on inside the schools. They don't have to rely on their child on phone or by text. Well, it comes down to trust. You're going to believe yeah. your child sending a text, and we all love our children, or sending, a, sending you a message, or are we going to believe the principal or the police who are out there saying something completely different? I don't have children in school anymore, but I hope I would have the restraint that I think I did with it to trust the school. Yeah. Yep. They want your children to be safe. Uh, Everybody uh, take a breath, hold on, because it, it doesn't help when you have parents mobbing the school. And as you said, it did feel different and saw differently at Olympic this were, week. Yeah, and, and real briefly, just to touch base on, on East Mech, that, that was almost old school. It was, again, a student who saw the gun, alerted an, a, 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 an administrator. They went to the young man who had the gun, and I'm told he just said, yeah, okay. You know, he wasn't there. He was afraid of something happening off campus, but he had the gun. And nothing got out. We got to East Mech. There was nobody out. It was another day, you know, a normal day, for lack mm -hmm. of uh, better description. And, you know, life went on. Yeah. And I guess to give to CMS's credit, um, CMS, their pride themselves in making the culture in the school where students feel comfortable in reporting these guns. So all these guns that were found inside the school, they were found because another student said, right. hey, Johnny has a gun, and that person went to the principal, to the school resource officer. So that's how all of these guns are found. Part two, that there are issues in the community. There was a taser found at Eastway mm -hmm. Middle School also, and it was found out that that student had the taser because he was scared when he walks home. You know, he's scared in his community. I understand yeah. it was the same thing at East Mecklenburg High mm -hmm. School, that there are things happening in these students' communities that is causing them to say that they need to be strapped because they are fearful when they go home and when they leave the school. Well, one of the things about this as well, something that you said, Mark, about parents take a breath for a minute. Because if you stop and think about it, and you both mentioned it, students are telling this information. Students are empowering themselves sure. and helping to keep their campus safe. Because in one report I've seen and, and looking at the numbers, they're saying if it was not for students telling us, right something more could have happened. So parents don't underestimate, sometimes we think they have lost their minds because they're our children, but don't underestimate their ability to see when something is wrong or something is about to happen and that they will open their mouth. I yeah. think there is a different culture right now too of fear. Everyone is on the edge of their seat this week because of Butler before and before the start of the school year because of Parkland. There was a lot of conversation yeah. about um, mass shootings at, at different schools throughout the country. So I think that, um, of course, much more easier said than done. Speaking personally, I never was scared going to school, um, never. Mm -hmm. But some kids that I've seen interviewed, um, I've, I don't report on education, but some students have said, I'm scared doing, going to school every day. Imagine right. having to carry a taser because you don't feel safe walking to school in the morning. So I, I think it is a different culture right now and I really feel for people who live in fear every day. I think that that's something that should change too. Again, yeah. easier said than done. Yeah. And I and just wanted just to put out there that, you know, that if CMS can keep guns from the schools, then they should be able to make all third graders read or <laughs> grade up by third grade. So I know, so, 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 so having that monumental task right. of, you know, the school district, you better keep every gun out of this school. You know, if they could do that, then they could, uh, you know, make reading excel for every child. Okay, can well, I throw something in there that may sound <laughs> really weird? Here comes the weird thing. Don't we have a lottery system that starts with education lottery? Mm -hmm. Didn't that system get sold to the public that this money would go for education? And if all that money was going for education, would this not help different school systems to not only check for guns and all this grand stuff, but actually do what they're supposed to do, which is teach the children and have educators who have the funds to do. That's just a little soapbox mm. I thought but I'd <laughs> lather up. You're waving your wand I there. Know. Magical I'm lathering up. But I really do that. ask about this whole that yeah. lottery thing. That concerns me because we have so many yeah. problems concerning no. education, and you got people playing lottery every day yeah. before they have their coffee, but we don't have money to remediate some of these well, problems. Well, speaking of money, though, I, I think that there is consideration for metal detectors, which CMS has said we're not going to do that 
but you know, in truth, they have contractors working every CMS game yeah. uh, where, you know, th those contractors wand everybody walking in. So CMS as a system may not, but their contractors do. And sounds like that conversation's come b coming it, back around. It's a conversation. <laughs> I heard it a lot out at Olympic. A right. lot of parents saying, well, but to me, that seems like the, the quick, easy fix. There are no easy fixes, right? right. It costs money, time. Get 3,400 students at Myers Park, biggest in the state, in to school, an open campus with what, 12, 15 buildings? By 715. By 715, yeah. seated in class. It, it isn't going to happen. And so. for people who say, why can't it happen? Consider when the majority of Charlotte Mecklenburg schools were built. They were built as open campuses. You can come right. in the front, you can come in the back, you can come in the sides, you can come down the hallway mm -hmm. different ways. How do you want or have someone at every opening? to be able to do that. You're creating a bigger monster yeah. that you won't be able to control. And I think CMS is leaning towards maybe um, wanding students. Um, of course, the metal detector, since you have different interests. Now, I did a story this week in Lancaster County. Um, they have four high schools in Lancaster County, South Carolina, and they do have metal detectors, but they do random checks. Right. So therefore, you know, you know, so a student never knows when they're going to get right. checked. So they can go to the math class, so everybody get up go through the metal detector and the dog will sniff the book bags and things I like that. that. So they say that that is a good way just to put the fear of God in the student that, hey, you never know when you're going to go through this metal detector. And that may be an option. And they say that that, ha that has worked because this school year, no guns found. Wow. And there's that. Okay, but yeah. it's all about money. And speaking of money, Amazon made their big announcement. Two cities, Northern Virginia, outside Washington, D.C., as well as New York. Now, we're going to find out, hopefully in the coming weeks, exactly what was offered in Charlotte's bid. Katie, you want to lead us there? Sure. So we, over the past, I guess it's been like 14 months now since uh, Charlotte officially put, put in its bid. Um, 13. But um, in that time, we've requested Charlotte's um, bid and the money attached to it about four times, um, only from the city. State's a separate issue and the county as well. Um, and they, they tell us that they're working on it now. So it, Evidently, it should be something that we get within the next, I guess it's now 22 business days, so about a week before Christmas, if not earlier. And, um, you know, what we're told is that uh, North Carolina's bid was competitive with D.C. and Virginia. Combined, those two cities um, offered one of the richest companies in the world uh, nearly $2 billion to create um, like 50,000 jobs over the next decade or something like that. Um, of course, this has uh, spurred a conversation about how much money, um, you know, municipalities should be offering um, taxpayer money um, to rich companies. And besides that, you know, how much of this should be done in secret? Uh, because this entire process has been um, very difficult to unpack. Of course, it was sort of an extraordinary circumstance because a lot of times, um, usually, uh, when these economic development groups are chasing a prospective business to come into town, it's done in total secret. We don't know about it until it's done. Um, so, you know, we knew when the process started, it was like a People have compared it to like The Bachelor or like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory or something. <laughs> the it's, it's a total spectacle. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Exactly. There we didn't get a rose. We didn't get a rose. We were not even boiled down to the last but the group date was standing. Amazing. <laughs> I, is, was it though? I, I think we could debate that one too. Yeah, um, yeah. So at the end of the day, you know, everyone is kind of like, this was a spectacle. You know, mm -hmm. no, cities going out of their way sort of looking a little silly at the end of the day well, with bending right over at the backwards. beginning, right? I mean, yes. we heard about the, you know, the buses being plastered with wrapped material to, you know, solicit well, yeah. Amazon at its headquarters to say, come check us out. I mean, yeah. the dance, the, the dance began very early. Yeah. Well, well we got we got miscongeniality because we did get <laughs> di distribution centers, right? So, you right. know. So maybe you got it. I we did, <laughs> we did <laughs> get some. Well, think of it this deal. way. Yeah. At least with a distribution center, there may be more people in Charlotte who really needed a job at that level as opposed to everybody's trying to go for the techie end of it. And if you had gotten something like that, maybe you would fill all of those new high-rise apartments in uptown Charlotte that nobody else can afford because you would have brought in people to fill them. But my question would have been, how does this, I mean, it gives you bragging rights for the city, 
but how does it help the rank and file people in this city? Will we see more people as you bring in folk who have high salaries and it pushes up the cost of everything? What happens to these people right here? And then you spend a lot of public money that these people right here also put into it. So we've talked about it around this table for a while mm -hmm. about how much do you spend to court somebody and then end up being the one who gets nothing. And, and I don't know, you gotta do some of that in business, but where do you stop? Do you keep raising the ceiling each time some major corporation says, I might like you. Well, it depends on how much you like me. <laughs> exactly. It's, and it's, it's show me the money. Yeah. Right. right. And it's Amazon and it's sexy and it's techie. And, you know, these numbers are thrown around like, you know, average salaries mm. of 100K. That is a very specific type of job, too. Like you were saying, yeah. it's not the warehouse job. By the way, Amazon, to its credit, was one of the companies that has said this year that they're raising their minimum wage to $15 yeah. an hour, which is... Saw that. Yeah, it's it's twice North Carolina's minimum wage, seven twenty five yeah. or something like that. Um, so there's, there's clearly a lot more opportunity for folks without a ton of expensive education in the warehouses, distribution mm -hmm. centers, what have you. Um, at the end of the day, I mean, even if Charlotte didn't make the short list of 20 cities, um, we talked to Ronnie By Bryant earlier this year. His entire team spent half their time from September through, you know, whenever the 20 list was um, whittled down. So I guess like three months on the Amazon bid for free. Can you imagine getting all of that labor for free and all of that like really detailed data? Amazon exactly. now knows like, okay, this is where all of the people who have master's degrees in Charlotte live. Mm -hmm. This is where people who, you know, have lived in their house for 20 years, this is where they live. Like it's very detailed information. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would love to have it. It would make for great. I thought only Facebook <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, Don't you expect your, your, your county and city leaders to go after those, uh, you, you, th look. those bids because, you know, because I guess Charlotte learned a lesson that when the financial, when the recession, that we found out that Charlotte only relied on the banking industry. And when the banking industry went down, then what happened? Jobs lost. So therefore, Charlotte said that, hey, we need to diversify. We need, we can no longer depend on right. meals and textile well, meals and things like that. Absolutely. So they have to diversify. So, you know, so I guess mm. to, to keep Charlotte still alive and relevant 20 years from yeah, they, now, they had I to guess try, they have right? to do something. Absolutely. Yeah, you got to try. They had to absolutely. try. Uh, yeah. The question again is how much. And, and it looks now, just 2020 hindsight, like Amazon really never did consider too many places. Seriously, other than the DC area was always at the top of the list. Mm -hmm. I'm a little surprised at New York. I mean, Amazon people make a hundred grand. Good luck living Cost in New York. Of living, yeah, yes. right. uh, and there's protests. Charlotte would have been would have been pretty out. cool uh, for that. But that's for, for the folks, people who feel like they have to be in NYC. Again, the diversity. I want to see that. I'd like to see diversity in the types of jobs you go after. Right. Don't always go after the wedding cake. Can we get some little shortcakes? You know, a little warehouse <laughs> business over here. Little bunt cake. Yeah, <laughs> some yeah. little things that the average person. So the average. So Resident everybody of can have Charlotte a piece of the pie. Yeah. has an opportunity at that. When you Chicken keep nuggets. going after the techie things that a lot of people don't have that experience with, right. it's you're a certain turning, profile you're going yeah, after. You're yeah. going after that certain profile, yeah. but you're creating a bigger caste system in the city and in yeah. this region because you're going to have a group of people. Katie just said it. What's the av what's our base mm -hmm. salary here? Minimum wage. And that's why How Amazon chose. And that's why Amazon, Amazon chose Virginia because they said that those are the people. They have the people that we need right. in order to make this thing work. Right. Speaking of the people, the Mecklenburg County commissioners are now going to be all Democrat. City Council is talking about four-year terms. What do y'all think of what's happening with the face of local government? That blue wave we heard about. <laughs> we did. It was right here in Mecklenburg County. I mean, I. I think nationally it wasn't the blue wave people were talking about in the midterm elections, but clearly uh, a Mecklenburg County voted for the Democratic, uh, the, the ninth district, and they voted strongly for uh, McCready, who lost uh, because of Union County and, and other counties down Close. east. Close. But, um, but yeah, now, is that all good? I don't know. Um, I, I, I think diversity in government, politics are meant to be messy, right? It's meant to be your idea, my idea, and we hash it out in the middle. And we kind of lost that on a state level for years. We've lost it on a national level. And, and now we're, we're losing that on the 
the local level. Well, well, we could still be diverse because just because you're a Democrat doesn't mean all Democrats think the same. Oh, way. thank goodness. There may, right. There, there, could, there could be some conservative Democrats. There could sure. be so, you know, so it, it, it's going to be interesting to oh, see. Oh, they'll, they'll fight about something. Works. I promise you. Yeah, <laughs> we will. We will. But it'll be interesting to see how that's going to work. I know that I talked to um, um, Earlene Lyde, who's the president of the Charlotte Mecklenburg Area Association, and she says that educators help with that blue wave because remember in May when mm -hmm. those teachers marched mm -hmm. to Raleigh mm -hmm. and they said that hey we're going to hold our leaders accountable if you don't do right by us we won't do right by you when it's time for us to go to the polls so they organized and they came up with their list of who to vote for they got the teachers during the early um, voting the teachers they marched through the polls they got students to march through the polls and they believe that they helped contribute to that blue wave because you know they, they they want some funding when it comes to teachers when the Mecklenburg County when they give money to the education CMS they want to make sure that those county leaders are doing right by the, the teachers one and thing students. I would say to the Democrats is don't take this for granted right do not take this for granted that you have carte blanche to do whatever you want because everyone's to. watching yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and and if you want to show people that what you are believing in and the agenda that you want to present, you better make sure you include all people. Don't do what the people you talked about were doing. Make sure you are inclusive and don't act like, oh, we got the keys to the bank. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because the people will be watching you even more. Right. So if nothing else, this election cycle show that people are watching. They may not say a lot because we talk about silent majorities or who's backing what candidate. But people are watching. And my parents taught me when I was very young, baby, you may not have any money, but you got one vote. Yeah, and that's why and that's they want. Yours. And that's why some people want to keep it at two years because if you're doing a bad job, I exactly. rather do bad with you for two years than to be stuck with you for four years. So that's why a lot of people are saying, that, "Hey, two years is enough to mm -hmm. show." And if you're doing a good job, we'll you send can, you back. Yeah. But if not, we'll bring you back home. Well, and voters have been asked this question before at the polls. And Mecklenburg County voters said no last time. Yeah. So we'll see, we'll see, but it's definitely uh, there to be discussed. And I remember reading one of the council members who said, uh, all we need is 5,000 signatures. And in the world of social media, this is where the power of social media yeah. can be just instantaneous. The idea of getting 5,000 signatures was not daunting to anybody. Right. Go fund me, and I'll just boom, boom, boom. There you go. <laughs> go online. fund me. Yeah. But know that two years is accountability. Four years is frustration of inability. Mm. Mm. Say that, that one, one more time. Right there. Yeah. Again, I, you know, I have short-term <laughs> memory loss, but that, that's how that Four works. years ago, I would have understood that. <laughs> <laughs> and moving on to our final topic, roadways. First of all, it's been a long time since I've heard the Highway Patrol say we're going to be at every 20 miles. You need to see us. And we also will have toll roads at the end of the month. I mean, it's a new day on the roadways of North Carolina. Well, I don't mind seeing the highway patrol. I just don't want to see the toll road. I, I, I B, don't think we B. have. I don't <laughs> care. Where it's world. coming, baby. I know. I know get it's those coming. Get quarters out. Get the quarters. I, no, I'm going to tell you what my sister said to me. Uh -oh. If you were from Charlotte and you are on Independence or 77, you are stupid because you know another way to go. <laughs> and that's how I feel about toll roads. I mean, if people feel like they want to do that, I gotta get there faster, quicker. I'll take the scenic route and, and a local, but I understand, I just won't give you my quarters. Yeah. <laughs> give no quarter. Mm -mm. Well, uh, I mean, the reality is, I, I think, everything costs money. And, and the, the toll road that's going to open uh, initially is that Monroe Bypass, yeah. a whole lot different than the one up in North Mecklenburg, right? Um, I, I, I'm not sure, but I've heard it's like four dollars from end to end if you right. take it. Yes, right. And, yeah, if you, and take you don't have thing. to go through those, you know, checkpoints and all that nonsense. I mean, it, it, it's sophisticated. But driving from here to Marshville on the other side, you go through Monroe. It's pretty painful sometimes. I'll go around. Okay. But I, and I understand there are people who are we are changing and people are moving here who are used to toll roads. It's those of us who are not used to toll right. roads who want justification for this. When we say, didn't we pass a bond issue or didn't we do something with the state? Wasn't there tax money that was supposed to help with this? And then the state says, but it's not enough. Costs are going up. So the conundrum for me is, yes, we need to have better roads. We need to be able to move people but how much is it gonna cost? Because once you open that gate, then from that point forward, I think we will see toll roads everywhere we go in the state, and we're gonna be paying for them from this point forward. So 
I'll stay home. There are a lot of people <laughs> who are moving down here who are already used to them, but I think that the friction this has caused here over the last few years, I mean, McCrory mm -hmm. would argue that this cost him the election, of course, in 2016. Um, anyone who's from Charlotte not used to the tolls is, I don't, I don't know anyone who's from here and is okay with them. Um, they're trying to make it as seamless as possible. You know, you'll have like the easy pass that technically you can get right. for free. Um, you can do a write-in like IOU or whatever if you don't have your easy pass or money with you. Um, and I know that they'll be doing like, um, you know, flexible, uh, you know, pricing or whatever based mm -hmm. on the traffic. Right, <coughs> where um, you get on, where you get off. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Um, that said, it doesn't really make it any more easy to digest. And there are still conversations about, you know, what to do about 77. You know, should we go back to the drawing board on but like how to... To, to B's point, you don't have to take the toll right. road. There's there are roads, yeah. you go 77 north up through West, by God, Virginia. I didn't know, but boom, there's a toll. Yeah. And by the way, you got to have cash. <laughs> and the roadways yeah. are yeah. slick so and you, nice. You, you, you can go around it, but I mean, that, that's, that's the interstate, and, and everyone's on it. So you can go around, mm -hmm. you know, at least for now. Maybe not later. <laughs> and, and that's the issue that I'm thinking about because mm -hmm. once you open that door to tolls, then it becomes a case of, so how do we make this a bit more amenable for them? Because they're going to have a toll road. We'll just make it nicer. Oh, and don't forget, we've got to get them over here. So mountains, get ready, because there's a toll road in your future. Mm. Well, it is coming, absolutely. Toll roads, taxes, Should be coming around the Twitter. mountain. <laughs> We're all here. <laughs> Oh my. <laughs> it's sort of stair stepping in, right? The Monroe Bypass is easing us all into the concept of the toll roads being here. But yeah. it, it'll be 77 when, when that is up and running. Yeah. Then, and that you know, 485 is going to have that lane also. And, so, and, and that's why that. it's so important that we go back to the voters. You know, these are our elected leaders who are yeah. making these decisions. So therefore, if you don't want tolls, then voters, wake up, beware. These are your elected leaders who are making these decisions. So that's why it's so important for everyone to go into the polls and to stay woke. And the conversation continues, the but we got to end woke. for now. Back to that third That is off the record there. tonight. Thanks for joining us. Good night. of PBS Charlotte.